also at the back. Can you hear me at the back? Good. I uh, was a little bit sick over the weekend, so I am highly medicated. So this could make me interesting how I'll try and behave. Um, how do you think what is quite a good idea to do? So I'm, uh, I'm Ben Webby, I'm Vice President of Ad Monetization Operations at Zega. Um, as Dave mentioned, I'm also a co-founder of the Mobile Growth and Mobile User Acquisition Fellowship. Uh, I do like to start off by having our panelists introduce himself. Uh, briefly, starting with Dave. Thank you, Ben. Hi, I'm Dave Madden. I'm with Electronic Arts. And we have a division at Electronic Arts that focuses on working with brands around partnership uh, and advertising. So we put technology into our games across console, mobile, and online that allows brands to reward gamers for interactions. And then we do a lot of promotions that happen uh, outside of the game, co-promotions at retail around big launches of games like Madden or FIFA, which is a very popular cool game. Nice to meet everyone. Good morning. My name is Rhiannon White. I'm from Shazam. I work in the product management team where I'm a director of product management responsible for advertising. So Shazam is a, is a, a mobile application that enables music recognition, or audio recognition in fact. Uh, and we have a, advertising is a very important part of our, our business. It's about half of our revenue stream, so it's ads and ad products and how we make a great advertising experience for both advertisers and our users is something we think about a lot. So I'm really excited to be here and talk to you today. Hi, I'm Ashley Higgins. I run ad monetization at Sega, um, our mobile division, doing games like Sonic Dash, Crazy Taxi, Super Monkey Ball. Um, ads are a big deal for us, so we'll be here. Hello, my name is Christian Malone. I'm uh, the VP of Growth and Advertising at Blue Mobile. I run the worldwide user acquisition team and uh, also run worldwide ad monetization. Um, we have various hit games like the Kim Kardashian Hollywood game, Deer Hunter, Dino Hunter, Contract Killer Sniper, uh, Diner Dash, Racing Rivals, and numerous others. Thanks, guys. Um, so I thought I'd give context as to why, why you know, we have a panel of people that are experts in our in-game advertising and why we're going to talk about it. Um, I'm sure many of you know we have a typical freemium app about 2% of our consumer base actually spend money. So the other 98% um, are not spending money on this game. Um, when we talk about revenue growth, uh, I looked at all the different strategies and tactics and tried to break that down. Uh, and I sort of came up in four pillars, uh, three of which are most commonly talked about. So we're trying to grow revenue. Of course, first you can try and grow your DAU base. If you have 2% of people playing, 2% of what number? So if that's a high number, obviously that's one way of driving more revenue. Um, Another, uh, another option is obviously increasing the percentage of people paying. So you can say I have 2% of people spending an app, maybe I'll try and get 3%, get 50% growth that way. Um, you can try and increase the wallet size of those, those payers. So try and get those 2% to spend more. Um, a lot of the publishers I talk to, and, and, and even a lot of people I speak to in the market, seem to focus, a lot of their tactics seem to focus on those three. Um, I would argue one of the easiest ways is actually to monetize the other 98%, which obviously the panelists here do, do very well. And we're going to share some of uh, the insights on that today and talk about some of the, uh, the strategies that are adopted and also look at it not just from a monetization perspective, but also from a consumer and a player perspective. So to kick us off, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to start high level and uh, let's start with Dave. Um, with how, does, how does your ad monetization strategy really fit into the broader uh, sort of monetization strategy across the egg. Sure, Ben. Uh, let me start by saying I've been doing, I've been at this game, advertising in games now for about 14 or 15 years and, and very passionate about it. The one kind of premise I've always felt made games a unique opportunity for brands to engage consumers was that gaming is the one medium that there's incremental content. There's pieces of content that people want to get their hands on and often they're being asked, as Ben pointed out, to buy that content, but a small percent of people ever actually pull their credit card out, open an account, and buy stuff. So there's an overwhelming majority of gamers who would like to get deeper into that content, but can't unless they're spending money. Advertising unlocks this wonderful world of content that our developers are making, but a lot of times consumers are never seeing. And so unlike 
typical advertising in a magazine or TV or on the radio where you're trying to avoid it. Anybody dri ever drive in their car, listening to a station and an ad comes on, so they change to another station, so you show of hands. People do that? Right. And the problem is on the radio, all the stations colluded together to decide to put ads at 12 minutes, 18 minutes, 32 minutes after the hour. So you go to another channel, there's just ads everywhere. And advertising can be annoying and get in your way. And so our, our whole premise at Electronic Arts and something that I've been passionate about for a long time is creating advertising experiences that reward a consumer, that reward them with a creative content they feel really good about. And when that magical moment happens in advertising where a consumer chooses to engage with an ad, it's usually a video ad now, and then they're rewarded with content that is actually of monetary or emotional value to them that helps them improve their experience in the game. They feel really good. The brand gets out of the ordinary, ordinarily strong results. So the brand feels good. And for the developer who's made all this content but only a small fraction of the users may be seeing it, they feel good because now you've got people deeper into the funnel. So to me, the, the opportunity is in gaming, but you'll see it come out, and I think we'll hear from Rhiannon about it in music. Unlocking content that's really valuable through ads is good for the whole ecosystem. And most importantly, it creates an ad model that unlike advertising for the last 60 years, which has happened on TV and on the radio, people want to avoid, it actually creates an ad model where people are leaning forward going, hey, I want more of that. Show me another ad. So it's an incredibly powerful platform that gaming is leading the way in digital advertising. And now we're seeing mobile, the explosion of mobile, really being the cutting edge of that, of that sort. Great, thanks. Let's hear from Shazam. Obviously, we've got uh, three game companies and then music. So Rihanna's going to keep us all balanced and honest. Um, so how, how does that differ from, or is, how is it similar to what, what Dave suggested for, uh, for Shazam, Rihanna? Well, I think there's really interesting points Dave's making around users and, and people, audiences being happy or wanting to access content. For us, it's a little bit different in that we don't have the same kind of unlocking levels or, or unlocking more content. But we do find consistently that when we, we used to have a freemium model where you could um, have a certain number of Shazams for free and then you have to pay to have more. As soon as we got rid of that and looked at advertising as a strong model, our, we saw our user growth, you know, the, the wonderful hockey stick started to happen. And that's where we saw incredible exponential growth. People want to use our app and they want to use our product, but they don't, it's not, it's not an app. Two percent of people are willing to pay, whereas there are literally hundreds of millions of people out there who want to use Shazam. So we find advertising is a really good value exchange, and we do a lot of user testing on our ads. Um, we do a lot of um, a lot of groups. We do a lot of quant. We do a lot of A/B testing as well, and we find consistently that when we ask people about ads, they, as long as it's not disruptive, to, to Dave's point around the traditional model of advertising, it's interrupting the content that you're enjoying. Whereas we we work really hard to make sure that our ad units and our advertising experiences is part of the experience. It doesn't stop you ever accessing Shazam. In fact, our, our highest performing units are ones that come at natural break points in the user journey, where people have gotten what they want, and then they, they think, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm ready to engage with something now. Uh, and that, we find people are really happy to exchange, you know, seeing ads there in return for having access to something for free. Um, so advertising is important to us. It, it, it works well for our users, and it works well for us overall. Great. Sorry, we won't we were, go away from question on everyone. I won't get through them all. Um, holiday season's coming up. Obviously, we see shoppers crawling over each other for TVs, pandemonium. From the ad space, obviously, for those of us in it, now it's a very exciting time. People pay a lot of money, they're going to pay premiums. Um, for any of you, um, does your, your strategy, do you do it, uh, sort of employ any particular tactics? to really maximize the holiday revenues from an advertising perspective? At Glue, we don't do anything uh, specific toward the holiday seasonality. Um, we already optimize for, for scale, so if something isn't a, a very interesting and meaningful scale, we don't uh, really bother testing, because it becomes harder and harder to move the needle for a $200 million business. But um, uh, since games like Deer Hunter, uh, Kim Kardashian, they all are between they, at some point, were two to four million DAU. Um, we already have solved for the scale piece, and then by the time we get to the holidays, uh, the advertisers and our partners do a great job of solving for the demand part, and um, we enjoy all the, the increase in revenue and the increase in, in sessions and DAU from uh, the holiday break. Great. Ashley. Um, yeah, so I think that from what I've heard talking to networks, it seems like the demand side obviously explodes during Q4. And so um, we sort of had an opportunity to take our supply and squeeze as much out of it as possible. So we can talk to different 
different networks, particularly around testing um, with new networks that we haven't tried before, um, potentially setting up some interesting business deals that make sure that we're making the most out of our holiday inventory. Great, and you mentioned brands, wanted to talk about that. So if we look at brands versus performance advertisers, um, and I'd love to hear the, the, the difference, particularly between, uh, I see a lot of performance advertisers really in gaming, we're in the same industry as us, um, and I know many companies like us will, will potentially have blacklists because we don't necessarily want to promote our competitors, but how do you, I mean, how do you feel about the mix of brands and performance, um, and then how do you feel about, you know, competitors being, you know, advertising in your apps? Um, I can, I can speak for this one. Uh, glue outside of Facebook and the iOS App Store and um, and Android, uh, we probably are really are one of the what, strongest app install uh, sources on mobile, and that just is because we are agnostic toward toward showing other other apps or even competitors in our in our apps. Um, we we believe that that often users are going to find great apps and there's a lot of great apps and they can play more than one and it's your choice whether you can you can monetize them or you can monetize that opportunity or you could you can you could pretend that their your users are in a cave and they're never going to discover any other apps. And the interesting piece is usually your competitors will bid the highest because you share an overlap in the same the same user demographic. So you you end up carving out uh, Possibly the largest and the strongest uh, monetization opportunity when you carve out your any of your competitors or anyone you, you think might be a competing company 